Oh, I got something in my Hey guys, welcome back. So today I just wanted, it's like really bright, like the sun's peeking through the clouds. It's supposed to be cloudy because it's supposed to rain. Anyways, Angel here. I'm back. I just wanted to show one of my favorite, oh my god, it's way too bright. I'm sorry guys. Is that better? No. It's like my eyes are so photosensitive right now. I don't know why. Alright, well, I'm trying to ignore that, but this video is going to be about one of my favorite succulents. I have different species of them, but it's called Kalinkoe tomentosa. It's the, it's also called the panda plant. It's just very pretty, look at that. This particular plant, I've had this one for three years. This is actually going to be its fourth year, fourth summer. And the really easy girl, this one actually started from two little, there's two plants, two main plants in here. And they were like this big. They were sold like, it was like this. Imagine two of these. They were in a single pot at Walmart for like $4 one summer. And I just decided I wanted to get into succulents. And this is one of the first ones that I bought. The other ones, most of them died and this one stayed they're very 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 uh low maintenance they're very easy to care for too because like the leaves they'll show you when you want they need to be watered i like it because they're fuzzy and this is why i like the tomentosa spirit spirits the tomentosa series like the species of the tomentos they come in different colors too i have a lot of different variations of it but this is the most common one it's the panda plant there's also one that has black instead of dots along the side of the edges they they also have um black stripes which is the black tie panda plant but this one's my favorite one it's just the regular panda plant and i also have um this one is called teddy bear I just transplanted this one because it was it was doing very very poorly. It was completely dried out. The bottom leaves shriveled up. I I just neglected this one, but it's pushing out new growth, and it's very fuzzy, very brown, very rosette shaped. That's one of the reasons why I like it. I like the rosette shaped succulents too, but this one's very fuzzy. The tomentosa has uh, it's like velvet. It's like crushed. It feels like fur. You can sit there and pet them. It's not going to ruin it. If you go too hard, it will, obviously. But it's just a plant you can, you can pet. It's very soft, very fuzzy. And I... They very rarely do they bloom indoors. That's what I've read so far is that they bloom indoors. They're, it's kind of often rare. Do you see flowers come out in, from inside the home cultivation? But... I got this one at Walmart the beginning of this month, and it's got three bloom stalks. Now, they were smaller than this bloom stalk right here when I got it, but they've grown a lot more, and there's even one about to open. I know you can't, you're not going to be able to see that, but really cool plant. This one is the Snow White Panda plant, white and fuzzy. It's like a... They all feel the same, like each species doesn't have like thicker fur and thinner fur. This one feels the same, they all feel the same. But they just come in different colors. This one's more white and sage. Really cute. I like it because the name was Snow White Panda Plant. I would have called it the Polar Bear Plant. I mean, if they're going to be like all named after bear types, I mean, it would only make sense. But I can't wait for this one to fully bloom. I want to try and pollinate this and collect some seed if I can, because it'd be cool to grow these from seed too. You can also propagate them from leaves. Um, I also heard that on the nursery plants, if it has like a PBS on it or PSB, or it's like prohibited to propagate. So it's kind of like a law violation to propagate some species of succulents and i think this one was one of them but i did it anyways just to see if i could 
Now you did. I mean, they're really easy to propagate, but you'll take a leaf off and you'll just put it on soil. And this is what they'll look like as babies. I don't know if you guys can see that. But they look like a little castle of little baby leaves growing out. And that's what it'll look like. That's after, this is maybe three weeks, four, maybe a month. Yeah, I would say about a month and a half of growth right there. And then they'll get bigger. Now this one I've had since last year in the summertime. And this one's actually growing a lot. Like a lot, a lot. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, this one's pushing out, it's branching out a lot. Or you can cut the top part off. Like say if this one was growing out more etoliated and it was like looking for the light, you can e easily fix them by just cutting off the top part. Like I did with this one. This one's called Teddy Bear. This one, I got this one online and I got this one at Walmart, but they're, they have the same name, but they don't look the same. If you can see that. This one's more like a chocolate soldier teddy bear. And this one's more like sage, light greenish. More lighter in color. And then only the tips are colored brown. Whereas this one looks more coppery. Both rosette shaped. But this one's more of like a chocolate soldier. Which I have more of. But this one was just a tip cutting. You see the... I don't know if you can see the stem... But the stem was rotting, so I just cut up to all the rot part off, and then I let it callus over. And by callus, you want the the fresh cut end to scab over, so that way it's it's not accessible to rot. It'll rot faster if you just get like a clean cut and then directly in the soil and then water it. It'll rot. You want to let it dry out first. And this one has dried out. I haven't watered it since I planted in here. And there are roots. So I am going to be watering this soon. But I'm going to put that to the side for now. Now the chocolate soldier varieties are really cool too. I have a lot of bunny for bunny hair in my Kalanchoe. So this is Kalanchoe tomatosa. The same plants as before. Just different colors. I just like collecting like the same plant but different colors of them. And this one's actually called cinnamon. It's actually more rust brown chocolate color. And then you got the two chocolate soldiers right here, which is more of an olive color. Olive is my favorite color. I love green. I love the color green. And these ones actually age out to like an olive green color. And then the fresh growth is still that sage blue, bluish grayish green. I don't know, super fuzzy, super easy plants. This one actually needs to be watered because you can see in the leaves when they stress out like that, they look very shriveled up and thin. And you can also fill the soil. The soil is pretty condensed actually, pretty dry. I might have to give this one a little water, but no one's doing fine. Another type you can also get, you'll also see these. These are called copper spoons. This is Kalinkoe orgialis. I think that's the name, orgialis. I just remember the name sounds like orgy, which is a pretty weird name. But this is called Kalinkoe or Kalancho. It's a regional thing. You'll hear, pe you'll hear people say Kalancho. You'll hear people say Kalinkoe. It's like tomato, tomato. And y'all guys just saw that. Oh, but there's roots on here. That's so cool. There's like little, little roots in there. So it was gonna root anyways. It, it was rooting on the side. It didn't. I didn't break it off. It already had roots. But it's it's like um, what was I saying? Regional thing like pecan, pecan. It's the same. It's Kalinkoe, Kalancho. I'm gonna say Kalinkoe because I like how it sounds. But this one's copper spoons. Now the care requirements. You can. I left this one in the south, facing the south in direct sun, like all summer long. It was up to a hundred and a hundred and two one day. It was up past the hundreds and this one survived. 
and I had it. It got, it probably got protection, like slight dampled protection from my pecan tree in the front, but it did very well. It's, it's growing like crazy. It's doing really good for it to stay this compact for three years to stay this compact. Usually you see a lot of them just like grow like a tree, very atoliated, but I provide a lot of full sun with this one. This one's doing really well. Now, I'm going to try and put this one in full sun, which I think it's going to do really good. Not all Cal and Chloe's can handle full sun, full intense sun. I'm going to test out, because a lot of these I just, a few of them haven't been tested. In the, I got a lot of them around Halloween, around fall time, when you see a lot of plants go on sale. So, they haven't been exposed to my summer yet, but I'm going to slowly acclimate them when spring gets here. I'm going to do a huge video around March of me putting like hundreds of succulents and cactus outside for the season. So stay tuned for that. But I'm going to try and put this one in the sun. I know that the tomentosas, the Cal and Coe tomentosas, the fuzzy ones, they, I think they do really well in the sun, in full sun. They handled it. Pretty well. I mean, as far as this one did, this one, I mean, going on for four years in the zone seven, seven A, we're not, not seven B because we're pretty dry, but this one should do very well. And then we'll see how they grow in the full sun. Sorry, I was looking for this one. This is another one that you see a lot in Home Depot. They sell the, the huge ones, like big pots and they usually have four of them and they have a bunch of flower blooms those ones are really 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 pretty to look at and they're easy to care for too it's the same but these ones won't they won't do that well in direct hot afternoon sun like blazing hot sun i think it'll scorch this plant so i think what i'm going to do is put this under the tree where it's in the shade but it gets bright light from the east to the west, it gets bright light from both sides and covered in the south uh, in high exposure. So I think this one will be doing okay. It did bloom when I bought this. It was a very, it was a lot smaller than this. But I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a brown spot right there. That's from the old stem from when I cut it. It had one stalk and it had a bunch of heads of white blooms white flowers and i just trimmed it back down to that main stalk and it sprouted these two this one right here and this one so it's it branched out so i'll have two clumps of all these blooms hopefully if it blooms again which I, i'm sure it will these these bloom very sporadically and they just bloom all year long but because i had this in winter dormancy with the cactus it's pretty dormant right now, but when spring comes on, I'll put this outside underneath my mailbox in the shade, and it'll, it'll get a lot of bright southern exposed light. Oh, and I just got some mail. All right, and yeah, I think that's all of the Cal and Coe's that I own. I think I have three, four, five, seven. Which isn't bad, seven. Um, when I go shopping for succulents, I don't really tend to go for the same one I have at home. There, are, There is some cactus that I already have, and I'll go and get three more just because they had buds on them. But I'll show that one in a later video when I do a cactus cleanup. Because a lot of my cactus are covered by bunny fur. My, my bunny Hefner... She just throws fur. She gets fur everywhere. I need to get an air filter or something for my room because there's fur everywhere. But yeah, I I hope I encourage someone to go try and getting a plant, getting a calanchoe or calancho, get a panda plant. I also saw in the, this book, if you haven't seen the other video, they call it plush plant, panda plant, or pussy ears now i can see why it stayed being called the plush plant panda plant nobody really calls it pussy ears anymore but probably probably a good reason not to but yeah so if you want to see a more oh did i even talk about care 
I think I skipped that. That's like the most of me being professional. But, okay, so lighting. This needs bright light. Bright light, as much bright light as you can give it. It can do lower, lower lighting. Like, I would say that the more fleshy, thin leaf ones can handle a little bit more medium to light shade. But they do well in bright light to avoid getting exfoliated. which if you don't know what exfoliation looks like, I have a really bad example or good example right here. You see how this has been, <laughs> this is so, I don't, I don't have any shame. Look, you know, life happens and I'll do a video on updating this on how to, how to trim this and bring this back to health. Cause it's not, and that's why I'm not freaking out. Cause I'm very confident in fixing this. Like. This is nothing. I can fix that. So, but to avoid that mess, you want to give it as much bright light as you can give it. Um, the tomatosas right here, I live in zone 7, so we get a lot of hot, dry heat. And this one did very well in the front yard facing the south. I, had it on the, I didn't have it on any metal or glass surfaces. I just had it on the floor and the ground. And... It did well, so as much light as you can give it. If you're gonna keep this inside, I would prefer a south-facing window, or if you're living, if you live in a more hotter region, I would say a west-facing window would be just fine. And the watering, when it comes to watering, I just, I just put my finger, just finger the soil, and if it feels wet, don't add any water. Like, not even if it's down to your middle nub. Like, this soil is so dry and compacted. I can't stick a finger in there. And it's very dry. So I can water this. I'm not going to because it's still winter here. In the wintertime, I usually don't water at all. Because they're succulents. They have natural water reservoirs inside the leaves. That's why you don't have to really water about watering. But when it comes to watering plants in general, you always want to water in coordination or in terms of lighting like if you get eight hours of sunlight that's a lot of light so you need to you'll probably have to water that more often but with succulents you don't really have to water them that often i mean they're growing aerial roots so if there is any humidity you know the hu the moisture can catch that too in case you don't you forget to water it but it's a pretty easy pair plant to take care of I just showed you how you can propagate them. So if you like it a lot and you want more of them, you want to save money, you can just propagate them. Um, you probably want to check and make sure that it's not illegal to propagate the ones you want. Because I think this one was illegal. So I wouldn't recommend. I don't know. I mean, who's really going around door to door and like checking? Hmm. Did you pay for this baby panda plant or did you just made it yourself? I mean, nobody's really checking i guess i don't know but yeah enough jibber jabber i just hope that i inspire someone to go out try getting some of these maybe maybe you find one that you like maybe you find one that fits you know your space a lot of them look funky but most of them they're really easy to take care of so i hope they inspired someone and until then um i'll see you later <laughs> bye